Chelsea Evelyn Madison was born on November 18, 1927, in Paulette, Vermont, in the Great Vermont Flood of that year. It had started raining in October, hard, and it continued all the way through October and into November, and by the time my grandmother was ready to deliver her daughter, her only daughter, Joe and Evelyn Crandall's only child. The Meadowee River had jumped its banks and the flooding had come right up to the little farmhouse they were renting. And there was no way for the doctor to get across the bridge and help deliver my mother. But my grandfather's mother was able to get there and help out. This was a hard time back in the late 20s and early 30s in this area. People were poor. They were poor. And Joe would go where the work was. And the work was maybe on a farm or maybe up in Granville. Um, in the slate quarries. And so they would go to the wherever there was a job and they went to the slate quarries up in Granville and they kind of made their way down 22, which was the main route from New York City to Canada, the only route, I should say. And they ended up in the wonderful little valley of Camden Valley, which is kind of near Salem, and it's a beautiful little valley nestled between mountains, and there Joe found work on a farm, and Evelyn took care of the family, the three of them. Uh, she didn't work, but she worked in the home. My mother grew up a solitary child, and at this point in the story. She was probably 11 years old. She attended the one-room schoolhouse, the Camden Valley School, and she became the custodian who would go earlier than everyone else, and she would make sure the fire was lit, that the floor was swept, and the blackboard was washed. She had a really nice relationship with her father, Joe. And one day, uh, Joe and Dorothy were sitting out on the steps of the little farmhouse next to the dirt road. And he said to her, I know we don't have much, but tell me something that you would like. What would you like? What could I give to you? And she thought, and she said, you know what I really want? I really want a piano. Piano? Those are pretty expensive. I don't think I could get you a piano, but I'll keep my eye out. And she said, okay. If I had a piano, I would teach myself and I could play. It would be great. And so he, the weeks went by, he thought about it, and uh, one day, months later, he was coming home from his job on the farm and he saw this old beat up piano by the side of the road with a sign that said $10. <laughs> and he went there and he, I think he got it down uh, probably to a little bit cheaper than $10. $10 was a lot of money. It was beaten up. It was, uh, some of the keys stuck and um, it really wasn't in tune. But he and his friend named Vano Mackey, I love that name. <laughs> put the put the piano on the back of his old rickety jalopy truck and they came home and Dorothy was on the step waiting for her dad because they would sit there while Evelyn made dinner in the kitchen. What is that? You have a piano. You found me a piano. And she was delighted. And they took the piano off the back of the truck and somehow with some levers and everybody helping out, 
they brought the piano into the front room, the parlor of the, the little house. And Dorothy immediately began playing songs that she would hear on the uh, crank phonograph that was also there. That was one of their prized possessions, by the way. Not many people had them at that point in Camden Valley. And she would play songs like Red River Valley and You Are My Sunshine and uh, One Little Stocking and all kinds of kind of countryish, sad songs that told stories. And she started banging out on the piano. She didn't have lessons, she didn't know how to play, but eventually, from listening to the music on the phonograph, she was able to do some chords. And she could play chords and she could sing. And this went on for a few weeks and she was thrilled. And <coughs> One afternoon after Joe had come home and he was sitting out on the step again and, and Evelyn was in the, the kitchen uh, working on dinner and Dorothy was there sitting on her round piano stool that he had found somewhere that had the claw legs with the glass balls in them and it would spin around. She loved that. And she started wait a minute, I hear something, something's going on here. And the piano began to shift a little bit and the whole thing just went foom, down into the basement where the potatoes and the carrots were kept. It wasn't a very nice farmhouse, but it was home. And Evelyn came running in, oh my God, Dorothy, what have you done? They got the father. He came in, they looked around at the piano. It was a disaster. The piano was not able to be used. And Dorothy felt very sad. They were gonna move again anyway. The piano stayed there and it was a rental. So they, the next place that they went was in, I believe, East Greenwich. But Dorothy always remembered those chords and when she grew up, and she had the five of us, she tried to teach us chords. We weren't very good at it, but we all had piano lessons from Mrs. Flower, who lived up in Rupert. <laughs> two of us it took, it, it stuck with two of the daughters, and so they still play pianos today. Um, my mother would gather us around her old piano, that my sister now has. And she would bang out, you are my sunshine with her chords and we would sing and we had a great time. And it all came from the piano that ended up in the 70s. 